Today we're changing the brakes on this Mazda CX-9. Let's get started. Go ahead and jack up this side. Looking like the lugs are 21 millimeter, which you should have in your spare tire kit if you don't have that. With the wheel off, not a bad idea to put it under here if you can, but this is the brake caliper. We'll use a 17 millimeter wrench and take them off. Take off this bolt here and that bolt down there. Something neat. Uh, I'm used to working on Subarus, but I just now realized this is a clever design. The slide pin is the caliper bolt. So when you take it off, it's just one piece. Pretty clever. And then our caliper just comes off. Make sure to hang this because you don't want it to hang by the soft line here, which it can potentially kink or even break it. So we'll go ahead and hang it because I always forget to get a hanger. As far as the pads themselves, they are definitely low. I'm gonna take a screwdriver I don't like and use it as a pry bar and get them out of there. Just like that. So ideally, we would also replace the rotor. However, at this time, uh, it could probably use machined, but I do not think it's necessary. So we're only gonna do a pad slap today. There's these little clips here. They come right out, just like that. I actually got one off camera, I didn't realize it. But that's as easy as they come out. I didn't realize I'm blocking the shot. But this is as easy as they come out. And because the brake calipers or the brake pads came with new boots, we're gonna take these out. I honestly kind of like this style. We'll be replacing this whole thing. Up one, it doesn't slide all the way through, so it's just gonna be that. The new clips just press right in. Just make sure they're oriented the correct orientation and they should just want to pop in with the new clip I'm going to put just a dab of grease on it or excuse me with the new boot I'm going to just put a dab of grease on it to kind of encourage it to go home and then it should there we go so I wanted to push it in with the caliper bolt, but it just wasn't wanting to cooperate. So I went and grabbed a dowel. Oh, and there we go. Easy peasy. You might be able to find it with a screwdriver or something. I worry if you use a screwdriver, you might tear it. So be careful. And then we put the new boot on up here. Just like that. This is actually pretty easy. May even give you a little guide where to lube, which is everything <laughs> except the uh, brake caliper surface. So we'll go ahead and do that. <laughs> Pop the hood. There's a safety catch. Oh, it's got a rod. Use both hands. And then we'll want to take the cap off the brake. 
booster just so it can bleed. The easiest way I've had to get these calipers in, or to get these in the calipers, is to seat the bottom like that, and then you just kind of press in. Like that. Here's kind of a better shot. Get it in. Get it over. Press it in. We want to push these in. They make tools that do that. Uh, this is just a regular piston type, so this should be easier. I've used C clamps before, but my favorite, as soon as I can find it. Oh. But my favorite method is put that in, like so, and then we'll use a large set of channel locks. Like so. And actually, I'll have to get this adjusted down a little, but you can see that it's working. Let's get a good shot of those going in. Hey! Yeah, just do this, push them all the way in. With it fully retracted, you can slide it back over and try not to tear that boot. These pins are unique, so do not, so do not mess them up. They are right up and down specific, but we'll go ahead and slide them in and then tighten them down. <laughs> Why are you look in the car, Nibby? Once it's in, when you first do the first brake, you'll have to pump the brake because those pistons need to go back out now. But put the wheel back on, torque it to spec, and you're done. We'll go ahead and move on to the rear brakes now. On to the rear. Uh, we're going to go ahead and put it up, put it on jack stands. Uh, then, for the rear, let's see if I can fit in here. Oh, hang on. Then, for the rear, it's a little different. So on my Subaru, there is not an access mode, but I just read up and apparently on Mazda there is. So, get in the car, hit the start button twice, this will take you into accessory mode. Put your foot all the way on the gas. You can see down there. And then we're going to hold this park release down. And we're going to hit the start button three times. And I can't do that with one hand. But it'll look like this. And if you heard that, that means that we now have the automatic digital rear caliper, whatever you want to call it, electronic uh, in service mode, so we can go ahead and change the brakes easily. All right, we're up on the jack stand, wheels off. We're gonna take this caliper bolt off. It's a 14. Oh, I actually wanna go that way. just want to come right out. This is your uh, digital brake caliper here. There's a little motor that spins a piston inside the piston. So there's no parking brake here. Traditional parking brake, I should say. Bolts come out. We use a big ugly screwdriver. Kind of pry this out. And it's out. And again, I just lost my screwdriver. Eh, I'm not that lost. Uh, we want to make sure this is secure so it's not pulling on this brake hose. 
and then I believe this should compress down the same way of the front pistons do now that it's in service mode. And then as far as the calipers, or as far as the pads, doo -doo -doo. there's a one, and there's a two. And then I'm going to sing you the song of my people of Remove the Clip. Remove the Clip. Install new clips. Install new clips. I'm doing this one handed. So don't make fun of me or my music. Here we go. Okay, clips are on. Let's see if we can push this in. Okay, so in the rear we use channel locks, but I don't want to put pressure on this. Uh, this is a plastic housing for, there's probably an electric stepper motor in there. Uh, yeah, and there's a drivetrain, I can see it now. Uh, so I'm using this caliper retraction tool retractor tool whatever the thing is called uh, I've shown it in another video where I was working on a 2017 Subaru Outback uh, I'm only using the pushing portion you can buy this tool I'll link it it's like 20 bucks uh, or you can rent it at most auto parts store so it's up to you uh, I do really like having it because it's it's came in handy versus driving to the store and then driving back uh, Right now, gas is getting close to $5 a gallon, so that's probably the cost of <laughs> driving to the store twice. So I don't have to buy it uh, or rent it. But it works very simply. Once it's installed, we're just going to push that piston back in. Okay. That's not bad at all. going in very smoothly and we're going to go ahead and bottom it out which I think is right there yep and then we'll take the whole thing out and then we'll make sure this is secure and we'll go ahead and start installing our pads just kidding the kit came with boots so we're going to install some boots these pistons like to seize up, especially if you live in the Rustville. Don't expect them to be this easy. It wouldn't surprise me. Some of them might need to be replaced. But that's as easy as they come off. We'll go ahead and slide new boots on. And we'll give them some grease. So, I'm doing this one-handed. So if I can do it one-handed, you can do it two-handed. I believe in you guys. Yeah, I might have needed two hands there. But, that's in. That's in. Feels good. And now we go ahead and put the brake pads on. And this is going to be fun because there's this extra tensioner here. Um, this little metal clip goes to the bottom makes it a little easier. I went ahead and greased this. You already know what that looks like. There we go. One handed. And finally we put the caliper back on.
Yeah, that one took. Do the same thing on the bottom. Typically, once you have one in, it goes very easy. Tighten them up. God, they're that loose still. Get them nice and tight. Torque them down. Okay, we'll go ahead and get the wheel back on and then we're gonna torque those lugs. I don't think I actually showed this. I'll show it now. But torque the lugs in a star pattern like that so that you're not doing anything. And then uh, I'm gonna go ahead and torque them down to 90 pound feet. I actually don't know what this one calls for, but I'll put it on the screen. So what I'm talking about by the way, these lugs are so deep in there, I have to put them on with the socket. But do not put them on. If you have a tool to do it, don't put them on with the tool. Put them on like this first. Also, this is not just a half inch extension. This is actually a 90 pound foot torque bar, which I love because it saves me so much time working these lugs down but for every time you have to take a wheel off so I just mounted it so like I said I thread them like this I don't think it matters which way you thread them I just want to make sure they're not cross threaded or anything Okay, now what I'm talking about is how I'm going to torque this. You're not supposed to torque with an impact gun, unless you have one of these bars, in which case... Okay, let's go ahead and get her back on the ground. Oh, one more thing. Go ahead, we'll put the brakes out of service mode. So again, hit the start button twice. Foot all the way on the gas. Pull this up and then hit the start button three times. You're now back in regular mode to start the car. Gives the Break some pumps to get fluid into the pistons and move them back out. Uh, go ahead and check the reservoir while you're here. Reservoir is looking good. Battery might need cleaned up, but when you close the hood, just let it drop. Don't have to put any dents into it. Uh, and then take it to drive down the driveway, then take it to drive down the road. Hope this video helped you. Thanks for watching.